Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Yellow Chair devotional. Today we get to meet a husband and wife who were a tag team in their ministry. They ministered in a pretty unique way, in a way that you and I can do as well. So let's learn about them together. All right, so we've got lots of pictures to look at here, right? What is this over here? This looks like some tents, right? We've got tents, we've got bed mats, or maybe fabric. We've got a map. We've got a scroll, so like the Bible. We've got needle and thread, and they're holding hands, so we know they're a husband and a wife. And our key phrase says, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. This is Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila were a married couple from Rome. They met Paul in Corinth and became friends with him because they all followed Jesus and they made tents. Priscilla and Aquila later helped a man named Apollos by teaching him more about God so he could teach others. All right, let's read their story together. All right, we're going to be in Acts chapter 18. Chapter 18, all right? So we've been in Acts the last several days. So now we just need to flip forward, all right? So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. If we get to Romans or Corinthians, we've gone too far. But Acts chapter 18. So big number 18. And we're going to start in verse 1. Now, one of the things that's interesting is we're going to learn even more about Paul here, all right? So now, remember these maps that I showed you? The maps about all of Paul's journeys? Well, we're going to experience some of his journeys. They're going to be talking about lots of places. And that just signifies the fact that they're moving around. And everywhere that Paul goes, he's talking about Jesus. He's telling people about the love of Jesus. All right, so we're going to get a little glimpse of these travels together. So, Acts 18, verse 1. Later, Paul left Athens, which is in Greece, and went to Corinth. Here he met a Jew named Aquila. Aquila was born in the country of Pontus, but Aquila and his wife Priscilla had recently moved to Corinth from Italy. They left Italy because Claudius, the Roman emperor, commanded that all Jews must leave Rome. Paul went to visit Aquila and Priscilla. They were tent makers just as he was. He stayed with them and worked with them. Every Sabbath day he talked with the Jews and Greeks in the synagogue. Paul tried to persuade these people to believe in Jesus. Did you know that Paul was a tent maker? That was his skill. That was his trade that he learned, just like Jesus learned to be a carpenter from his father Joseph. Paul had learned how to be a tent maker, just like Priscilla and Aquila were. And so sometimes when we hear all of Paul traveling here, there, and everywhere, how does he afford to do this? Where does the money come from? And so here we get a glimpse that Paul would stop and he helped them make tents. And by helping them, he was also able to make some money so he could buy food and different things. And here, Priscilla and Aquila, we learn that they've just moved to this area because Christians weren't allowed in Rome right now. They weren't very popular with the Roman emperor. And remember, things were kind of tense between Rome and the Jews during the time of Jesus. And so they've just moved, but they love Jesus. And so Paul stays with Priscilla and Aquila. They work together. So now we're going to fast forward through some verses. And the verses that we're fast forwarding through are Saul, I mean, Paul going here and here and here. And now we're going to go to verse 18, verse 18. So I had to turn a page, follow down to verse 18. And now my heading says that Paul returns to Antioch. So he's traveled around. Now he returns and it says, Paul stayed with the believers for many more days. Then he left and sailed for Syria. Priscilla and Aquila went with him. At Centura, Paul cut off his hair. This showed that he had made a promise to God. We don't really know a lot about that, but apparently it was a, a bit of a holy haircut, huh? Then they went to Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. While Paul was there, he went into the synagogue and talked with the Jews. When they asked him to stay with them longer, he refused. He left them, but he said, I will come back to you again if God wants me to. And so he sailed away from Ephesus. 
Paul landed at Caesarea. Then he went and gave greetings to the church in Jerusalem. After that, Paul went to Antioch. He stayed there for a while and then left and went through the countries of Galatia and Phrygia. He traveled from town to town in these countries, giving strength to all the followers. So lots of areas, and Paul's going here, and Paul's going there, and Paul's teaching at this synagogue, and Paul's talking over here, and he's pointing everyone to Jesus. But Priscilla and Aquila, they stayed behind, right? They stayed behind, and we're going to see why. Verse 24, a Jew named Apollos came to Ephesus. He was born in the city of Alexandria. He was an educated man who knew the scriptures well. He had been taught about the Lord. He was always very excited when he spoke and taught the truth about Jesus. But the only baptism that Apollos knew about was the baptism that John the Baptist taught. Apollos began to speak very boldly in a synagogue and Priscilla and Aquila heard him. So they took him into their home and helped him better understand the way of God, right? So that's why we've got these scrolls, right? Better understand the way of God. So let's pause and think about this for a second, right? It says that he was very excited. Right? He loved speaking about Jesus. He loved Jesus, but it said that he only knew about the John the Baptist baptism. Right, So when we think about John the Baptist, he was talking about people repenting from their sins, being washed clean, but it was all pointing to Jesus. Right Now, um, Priscilla and Aquila go, oh, but there's more. There's more for you to learn. Things that they've learned from Paul, things that they've learned as they've studied on their own. And so they want him to understand more about how baptism brings Jesus into our hearts. It's not just saying that we're sorry for our sins. We are. But when we are baptized, Jesus, oh, we want him in our hearts. So they want him to understand this because they know Apollos is excited. He wants to tell people about Jesus. We want to make sure he's telling them all the things about Jesus. So now verse 27. Now Apollos wanted to go to the country of southern Greece, so the believers helped him. They wrote a letter to the followers there asking them to accept him. These followers had believed in Jesus because of God's grace, and when Apollos went there, he helped them very much. He argued very strongly with the Jews before all the people. Apollos clearly proved that the Jews were wrong, and using the scripture, he proved that Jesus is the Christ. So Priscilla and Aquila, their names don't get a lot of limelight and attention in these stories. They're kind of these secondary characters at times, but they did amazing things. And sometimes it felt like it was very small, but by helping Apollos understand the Bible, by helping Apollos understand more about Jesus, Apollos became an amazing missionary who went to all these other churches and it says that he was able to help them very much and help all of these followers to know Jesus better. And that was because Priscilla and Aquila had helped Apollos. So sometimes we don't always see the big results. Sometimes we're just behind the scenes. We're the encouragers. We're helping with maybe something that's not up front and not getting a ton of attention or praise, but it still is important. It still makes a really big difference. When we, when we are kind, when we are loving, when we are helpful to others, and in small ways we're encouraging them, we have no idea how that might become a domino effect, right? When all the dominoes start, start falling, it might become something that is even bigger, where that small role that we play becomes something big in what someone else does as a result. And so when I think about Priscilla and Aquila, I think about how treasured it is all the people who are doing the small things behind the scenes, who they aren't up front preaching in front of church, they were never up front, but you wanna know something? When Paul came through town, they said, hey, stay with us. Hey, we'll help give you some food. Hey, would come on over, let's study the Bible together. Small things behind the scenes that made an eternal difference in people like Paul and Apollos, these missionaries who were the, who were the upfront guys. 
all the upfront guys need that support system of the people behind the scenes who are investing in them and helping them know the love of Jesus, all right? So if you're a behind the scenes person, take heart. You are doing something so important. And even though if it seems small at times or you feel like you're not making a big difference, know that you are. Priscilla and Aquila, they are remembered forever and ever in our Bibles for the small things that they did, even if it was just sewing tents with a needle and thread and giving a place for Paul to sleep. Those little things make a big difference because that's another way that we show the love of Jesus. All right, so let's see. Priscilla and Aquila helped people learn about God and grow closer to him. What is something that you are good at? And how can you use this talent to help others learn more about God's love? So what are some things that you're good at? Reflect on that today. And how can you use those talents, those gifts that God has given you to then also help others learn more about God's love? We're going to say a prayer and then I'm going to talk about an activity. Dear God, thank you for Priscilla and Aquila's story. Show us ways to encourage people around us to know you better. And thank you that for all the little behind the scenes contributions, whether it's letting people stay in, in a tent, feeding them a meal, having them over for a Bible study, all of the little behind the scenes things, they count. They are important and they show your love just as, the, as much as the people who are up front. And so may we continue to just contribute the small things, knowing that you turn them into big things. We thank you for your love. Amen. All right. Paul was a tent maker. Priscilla and Aquila were tent makers. I think that it's time to build a tent, like a blanket fort. Don't you think that sounds like a little fun? Maybe you take some chairs and the blankets or maybe some sheets and stretch them out over a table. Get some... Get some fun blankets and pillows. Build yourself a tent. And then when you're inside that tent, you can think about those questions. What are some of your talents, things that you're good at and enjoy doing? And how can you use those gifts and those talents to share the love of Jesus? So happy tent making. Enjoy some cozy time with Jesus inside of your tent. And I can't wait to hear about all the things that you're going to do someday to help share God's love. Have a great rest of your day.